Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about traveling to Havana, Cuba in 2023 as an American citizen. Now, this video is only going to apply to American citizens who were not born in Cuba. If you were born in Cuba, then the process is going to look a little bit different. I'm doing this video because there's a lot of misinformation when it comes to visiting Cuba, what the process is like, and how to do it. If you're interested in visiting Cuba, do not worry, I got you covered. In years past, American passport holders were forced to travel through third-party countries or through special charter flights that would be leaving from Miami. But now you can go and book a regular commercial flight and the best way for you to book a trip to Cuba is not going to specific airlines, but actually going to Google Flights. Let me walk you through how easy this is. Go to your browser and type in google.com slash flights. With your home airport on the left, type in your desired Cuban city on the right. Now let's let Google find the cheapest one. Go ahead and search by desired date and then book when you're ready. With your flight in hand, the next order of business is obtaining a Cuban tourist visa. Understand that there is no visa process. This is very simply bought at the gate or bought and advanced online. And I'll post that link for you in the description box below. Again, you can very simply buy this tourist visa at the gate for anywhere between $85 and $99. Since technically tourism is not allowed to Cuba, your travel has to fall under one of the 12 accepted reasons for travel. Of this list, my favorite is support for the Cuban people. It's a nice catch-all term that allows for closeted tourism without too many questions. You'll see me in videos in the near future supporting the Cuban people. 45th President Mr. Trump made a lot of changes to the Obama administration's travel policy towards Cuba. And since then, the Biden administration has only opened things up slightly. You cannot bring rum or cigars made here in Cuba back to the United States from Cuba. Now, you, there are ways how you can bring it back. You'd have to buy it, say, in Mexico or, say, in another Caribbean country and bring it back. Now, if you do decide to try to bring back rum or cigars from Cuba, understand that it can be confiscated from you. So if you're gonna take that risk, good luck. My flight back into Miami is in a couple hours. I don't know if I'm gonna end up killing these bad boys. Probably not, because I'd probably get on the flight leaning, but I'm probably gonna end up giving them away. As of about two months ago, for the first time since the pandemic, Americans can now fly to other airports in Cuba outside of Jose Marti International Airport in Havana. Unlike our Canadian and European brethren, Americans cannot stay in hotels here in Cuba. The reason why is that the hotels are actually controlled by the government and your US card is not going to work. However, in the event that you have a European bank account or a Canadian bank account, you can use that card in order to purchase your stay at the, at the government run hotel. So some of you may be asking, okay, Keenan, where do we stay when we go to Cuba? The answer is in Casa Particulares or Airbnbs. There used to be this sort of special understanding where there were basically rooms for rent in houses here in Havana, and you would literally walk from place to place looking for a Casa Particular. Now, the great part about that system was if you stopped at a house and you weren't able to find a room there because they were full, that Casa Particular would know other places that you could stay and they would call them to see if they could help you out. Also, if you were, say, traveling from city to city, they also have connects in different cities where they could help you with finding a house in another city as well. However, now we have the internet and we don't have to do that anymore. I simply went on Airbnb.com and found this wonderful house that I'm staying in right now. Actually, let me actually show you it real quick. Bienvenido a mi casa. Let's show it to you. So right here is the living area, living room. It's quite nice and spacious. Now, for you folks that may live in the South, this may not be so spacious to you, but in New York, this is a spacious place. Of course, in New York, we live in closets. Here we are, we have the dining room area. I have all my stuff uh, scattered out. 
it was actually my birthday a couple of days ago and the cleaning lady found out and she was able to do this for me. I really appreciate it. That's something really sweet and unexpected. Oh, look at this piece of art right here. Beautiful. All right. And then the bedroom, cautioning you, it's a little bit messy, messy guy, you know how that go. The light is controllable. You can go down, you can go up, you can do a whole bunch of different things. There's closet space where I have things hanging quite ghetto I apologize. And then actually in the safe is where I keep uh, the Monopoly money, okay, and the YouTube money. And then we have the bathroom right over here. Wonderful full service bathroom, okay. And then I also have the shower right here. Now, I've stayed in places that haven't had hot water, and that's been kind of uh, problematic uh, when it's cold, but here in, here in the Caribbean, you don't really need hot water like that. Even that being said, you still have a hot water shower right here. Okay, let's get back to the video. So let's actually talk about the currency piece. When it comes to what you should bring to spend per day here in Cuba, I would say about 100 US dollars for each day should be pretty good. Cuba is not an expensive place. Although that kind of depends. If you're somebody who likes to eat at the highest quality restaurants, get the highest quality this, that, then maybe you might want to bring a little bit more money. But for the average person, you're not going to spend that much money in Cuba. For a period of maybe actually 30 years, Cuba was using kook. Kook was pegged one to one with the US dollar, and that allowed Cuba to enjoy some stability when it came to their currency. The Coop was one-to-one -one with the U.S. dollar, and Coop, which is C-U-P, which is all that they use now, was pegged 24 to 1 to Coop. People that work for the government would make money in Coop. People who work in private industries, they would tend to earn Coop as they would be interacting with tourists who were able to change their currency, the euro, the dollar, the pound, for Coop. However, over time, the government understood that that was causing a sort of separation in society. There are people that work for the government that were only earning uh, pesos, the, the national peso, and then you had people who were earning kook and they were affording a sort of higher lifestyle. It was creating a separation and society was forming sort of social classes, if you will. So in effort to be fair, what the Cuban government decided to do was do away with kook and only support the CUP coupe, which is the, the national money currently here. As for the value of the coupe, well, that's actually a complicated thing because outside of Cuba, you can't actually trade it for anything. But here in Cuba, the value is officially, officially 25 or 24 to one US dollar. What you actually trade it for is a different story though. At the current time, the banks are trading it for 110 to one US dollar. So that's 110 Cuban pesos to one US dollar. However, in the streets, in La Calle, it's very different. Wait, I know some of you may be thinking, hey Keenan, are you actually going out onto the street and looking for somebody who is willing to trade a US dollar for a Cuban peso? The answer is absolutely not. That's not the way how it works. This is how you tackle the situation. You go to anybody that you may know already in Cuba, wink, wink, somebody who you might have made a certain transaction with, wink, wink, and they will know somebody who is very willing to trade Cuban pesos to US, uh, or US dollars to Cuban pesos for you. So the street rate or unofficial rate for the Cuban peso right now is 150 to one. Don't quote me and expect that to be the case when you get to Cuba. It is something that rapidly changes. A couple months ago, it was 200 to one. Now it's kind of gone down for Americans to 150 to one. The Euro is sort of tied to the US dollar in terms of what it has changed for. However, it depends on the influx of tourists, what they're going to charge for the US dollar versus the um, Euro dollar. Again, right now here in Havana, the rate is pretty much 150 to one. And that's actually more so just here in Vedado. In the urban areas, the very urban areas of Old Havana, Cayo Hueso, you can actually change it for 160 to one. If you go out to say Camagüe, I spoke to someone who told me that you can get it for 170 or 168 to one US dollar. So 
you may have been told that you can only use euros here in Cuba. The answer is, yeah, officially, sort of. But that's not really what the case is. When it comes to using foreign currency in an official way at, say, government-owned places, then the answer is kind of, sort of, still. They'll, they'll take your US dollar. So, some of you may want to do some bouncing around from city to city while you're here in Cuba. And the answer is that you can do it for a low price. And this is exactly how. A government corporation, Via Azul, allows you to go from city to city here in Cuba. The only kicker is that your transactions have to be made with a foreign card. Local so, Cubans have to use a company called Omnibus Nacional. At your bus terminals, you'll often find that Omnibus Nacional and Via Azul share the same terminal, but they're just different buses with slightly different quality. Both, unfortunately, do not have bathrooms, so as you're traveling throughout Cuba, there will be stops, likely at a government-owned restaurant, and you can go right ahead and use the restroom if you need to. Just make sure that for Via Azul, you are there in advance of your bus. I saw a gentleman who got to the terminal maybe 20 to 30 minutes before his bus was to depart, and he was told that the system is closed and he cannot check in. You have to check in officially three hours before your bus. However, in actuality, you can check in like an hour before your bus, and it's okay. Before I get out of here, just one more thing. When selecting your Airbnb, please choose a property that has Wi-Fi. If not, please be sure to buy an Ateshka Cuba Cell SIM card. So if there's anything that you felt that I left out, just ask me in the comment section below and I'll get back to you quickly. All right, I gotta go link up with the homie. I'll see you later.